Hey guys, it's Rav and today I'll be revisiting my Daisy myth busting series. It's been over a year since my last myth busting video, so we've got plenty of your myths to get through today. As always, if you do have any myths of your own, let me know in the comments down below. And if you do enjoy this type of content, a like and a sub are very much appreciated. Without further ado, let's get into our first myth, that a badly damaged gun can jam on you if you try to F11. In DayZ, there are three components to a weapon, the actual firearm itself, the ammunition and the magazine, although not all weapons require one. We'll first test a weapon by shooting pristine rounds from a pristine mag in a badly damaged gun. And as every DayZ player has frustratingly experienced, the gun jammed. I tried the same test with ammunition, shooting badly damaged rounds from a pristine weapon with a pristine mag. To my surprise, this didn't seem to affect the weapon at all, and I know it wasn't a myth on the list, but I'd always assumed that the condition of ammunition affected whether the weapon would jam, apparently not. I then finally tested the magazine, shooting pristine ammo with a pristine firearm using a badly damaged magazine. And as expected, this did cause the weapon to jam, so I loaded a badly damaged gun with a badly damaged mag and got to testing, I died every time. This seemed off, so I tried the same test, but just shooting the gun into the air to see how often it would jam. The gun seemed to jam roughly every six shots, so for it not to jam in one of my 50 tests, it's extremely unlikely. First, I thought a gun couldn't jam on its first shot. However, after some further testing, it actually could. This led me to believe that the myth was just a myth. Although, technically speaking, I could have just got extremely unlucky in my testing. So, if anyone does have some actual evidence of this, I'd love to see it. The next myth is that you can distract wolves with a road flare. Now, if you've watched my 202 tips and tricks video, you'll know that you can distract a wolf with bones, guts or meat. A road flare seemed plausible, so I got to testing. and it was nice to see that this myth was actually true. However, after some further testing, I found that wolves could be distracted by pretty much anything. I first thought it was the sound of the impact, but as seen in this clip, the wolf is literally attacking a rolling rock. So, they seem to actually aggro onto objects. This means the myth is technically true. While yes, you can distract a wolf with a road flare, it's probably got more to do with it being an object than it specifically being a road flare. A similar myth, and probably where the previous one stems from, is that wolves get scared from fire. To test this, I simply surrounded myself with fires and held a torch. It may have looked like I was trying to summon the devil, but the wolves were having none of it. The fire did not stop them from attacking me. In fact, I'm pretty sure the wolf actually attacked the fire in this clip. So, this myth is busted, although I'd like to point out that while testing, I actually observed wolves going and eating an infected I'd previously killed, which I thought was a really interesting small detail. The next myth on the list is that shoes deteriorate quicker when running on pavement compared to grass. I wasn't exactly sure how to test it, so I got some badly damaged shoes and ran along a road until they ruined. I then got an identical pair of badly damaged shoes and ran parallel to the road but on grass. I was able to run about three times as far on the grass compared to the pavement I repeated this test a few more times and the grass won every time, confirming that this myth is in fact true and gives us another reason why we shouldn't travel on the roads. The next myth is that you can shoot a car engine to quickly disable it. Now, this sounds plausible, but with my thousands of hours of shooting any car that dare drive close to me, I've not once experienced this. And well, there's only one way to test this. As seen, shooting the engine will in fact ruin the entire car. Now, I wanted to test if it was actually shooting the engine that was ruining the car, and not just shooting the car in general. After some further tests, shooting all different parts of the car, I concluded that it was in fact due to shooting the engine. I then wanted to test the effects of having a hood on a car, and if it actually added any protection. At first, I thought it made it actually invincible, but this happened to do with the angle that I was shooting from. The car hood would deflect most bullets. I then tested the individual parts of the car, the radiator, the battery, and the spark plug. 
These were quick to ruin in only a few bullets and would disable a car without actually ruining the entire vehicle. Although the spark plug was quite difficult to hit, in addition you could ruin these through the hood. This made shooting through the bumper the quickest way to ruin a radiator, resulting in disabling the entire car. Do keep in mind the engine parts are laid out differently in each car, in fact the engine is actually located in the back of a Sarka, making it arguably one of the best cars, although the radiator remains pretty consistent in every car, front and central. To conclude, this myth is true, you can disable a car by shooting the engine, so next time a car is speeding towards you, a couple shots right in between the headlights should do the trick. The next myth is one that I was certain is true, that you can jump further and or higher with a weapon in your hand. I could swear you could only make the Electro PD jump with a weapon in your hand, so I got to test it. To fairly test this, I got two containers which I could increase the gap in between. I used a wall and then a jump glitch which would make you jump forward even though you were walking backwards, so that I always jumped from the exact same spot. I'd increase the distance of the jump without a weapon until it was impossible and then I'd see if I could make it with a gun in my hand. To my surprise I actually fell extremely short when trying it with a weapon in my hand. This led me to believe that it was in fact the other way round. And to my surprise after further testing it was. You could jump a lot further and I mean a lot. This distance was almost unbelievable if you timed a jump without a weapon in your hands at the exact right time. I tried the same test but with height. I'd raise a container and test whether each jump could make it on top but both jumps could make every single height until it was impossible for either. I then tried the same test but jumping backwards, and this was the only jump that actually seemed different depending on if you had a weapon in your hand or not. You could jump considerably higher with a weapon than without. So this myth is kinda true, when jumping backwards you do jump higher with a weapon in your hand. Jumping forward seemed to make no difference to height, but jumping distance seemed to be considerably further without a weapon in your hand. And if you're wondering how to do the forward jump while walking backwards from earlier in the tests, you quickly tap forward and then continue walking back just before you jump. Our next myth is that taking an EpiPen before you go unconscious will reduce the time you're knocked out for. To test this, I stepped on a landmine with and without taking an EpiPen. As expected, there was no difference. I tried the same test, we were infected, and again, no noticeable difference. So, you'll have to wait until after you fall unconscious to receive your EpiPen. Our next myth is that you regen blood quicker when lying down. And this probably stems from the fact you're less likely to fall unconscious if you lay down when on low blood. To test this, I used a blood bag to remove 500 blood from me and timed how quick it would take me to regen 10 of this when both lying down and standing up. I started the timer as soon as the white circle disappeared and stopped it as soon as the player had regen 10.17 blood. As you can see, laying down was slightly quicker. This was a relatively short sample, so over a longer period of time, the effects would be a lot more noticeable. However, the change is not drastic enough for me to warrant losing my mobility. I'd much rather continue to loot and travel with low blood than to just lie down. But this myth is in fact true, so on to our next, that the speed of jogging is dependent on whether you're holding a weapon. To test this, I raced myself across the same stretch, both holding a weapon and not. I tried to test with both a rifle and a pistol as they had different animations. The results can be seen on screen. To conclude, the myth is true. You do jog quicker without a rifle in your hand, although this is only true to rifles and not pistols. Now this last myth has been around for years. The fact you can apparently cure Kuru, the disease you get from eating human meat, by staring at a teddy bear. Now there's only one reasonable way to test that and it's to give myself Kuru and to just literally stare at a bear for an hour. To finally settle it, the myth does not work but I do feel sorry for all the poor souls who have actually tried this. Once again, there's only one way to cure Kuru, and that sends you right back to the coast.